So CES is upon us again, and there's been a couple of big announcements from both Canon and Nikon. Namely, the Canon 1DX Mark III, the Nikon D780, and also a new Telephoto 2.8 zoom. Now, given that all of these announcements were made more than 28 minutes ago, pretty much every man and his dog now has videos on YouTube that go through all of the individual specs of everything. So I'm not going to bother trudging through all that stuff again. Both of these releases are upgrades on their predecessors, both of which were pretty decent, capable cameras to begin with. So the new ones are only taking things that little bit further. But it brings more into question for me, are these releases the battle cries of DSLRs taking the fight back to mirrorless, or are they more the swan song of DSLRs about to keel over and die in place of mirrorless? Because while both the 1DX Mark III and D780 see improvements across the board over their predecessors, it seems more of the improvements are being made on the mirrorless aspect of the camera rather than the DSLR. And by that I mean fundamentally the only difference between a mirrorless and a DSLR is the flippy mirror. That's it. Anything else regarding things like the sizes of the body, the ergonomics of it, have absolutely nothing to do with whether it's a DSLR or a mirrorless. It's just the design of the body. Now obviously the 1DX Mark III replaces the Mark II. The Mark II in terms of stills was a phenomenal camera, which means the Mark III is only going to be better. Oh, Dave, Dave, you can't say that, mate. Remember, you're supposed to be a Sony fanboy. You're right, I'm sorry. The 1DX Mark III is an absolutely god-awful waste of space, but if someone was to scratch out the Canon badge and write Sony, then it would be phenomenal. The buffer has gone frankly insane, going from, I think it's 170 RAW files on the Mark II to over 1,000 on the Mark III. The Mark II can shoot for like 12 seconds continuously, and I don't think I've ever heard anyone complaining about outrunning the buffer on the Mark II. By comparison, the Mark III could shoot for about 12 hours continuously. I honestly think that ridiculously large buffer wasn't intentionally designed like that, it was just a byproduct of using the really fast CF Express cards, and I think part of the reason for choosing the CF Express was so that they could bring in the 5.5k raw video, because the data rate on that is alarming. I think, if I remember rightly, a 256 gigabyte card lasts you about 10 minutes worth of video footage, which is not exactly practical. Although I'm sure Peter McKinnon will probably defend it and say it's a really good thing that it's like going back to the days of film. You know, where you only had so many shots in a roll, you had to think about every single shot. He'll say he's only got 10 minutes worth of footage, so he can't just gun off hours worth of video and then trough through all the crap later to pick out those few good bits. He's going to have to think about every single shot that he's doing. Or maybe he won't, I don't know. Now, I have seen some complaints about two aspects of the 1DX Mark III. Firstly, that it's a fixed screen. There's no articulation, there's no flippiness. Now, I like a flippy screen, don't get me wrong, but if you honestly think Canon are going to put a flip screen on a 1D DSLR, just get your head out of the clouds, because it's never going to happen. Yes, flippy screens are pretty solid, and I've not seen anyone actually manage to break one, but they are still structurally weaker than a completely fixed screen. And Canon designed those 1D cameras purely around rigidity. Canon haven't designed that camera so that it can survive a little bit of a tumble if you accidentally drop it. They've designed it that you could literally bludgeon someone to death with it and then go carry on shooting pictures without a hitch. I'm not even convinced Canon are going to put a flip screen on the RF version of a 1D camera, but that remains to be seen. Incidentally, I think as long as Canon just take the mirrorless components of the 1DX Mark III and put them into a slightly enlarged RF body, they'll be on for a winner. The camera does not need an increase in resolution. Some people argue that an increase in resolution means smaller pixels, which means more noise. That really kind of isn't the case, because with smaller pixels, you get smaller noise, so unless you're viewing the images at a one-to-one -one ratio, you never really see the true difference in noise levels. If you're printing out a low resolution versus a high resolution at, say, 12 by 8 the noise difference becomes negligible. Where there is a difference, however, is the file size. You increase the resolution, you increase the file size, that's more processing power and more time to clear the buffer. Although, as we've already established, the Canon has no issues holding the buffer back either. 
But while there are some performance increases in the DSLR aspects of things with the autofocus and the mirror shooting speed, there are bigger improvements on the mirrorless aspect. Now, obviously, I'm not going to talk about the video because you can't have the video through the optical viewfinder anyway, so that's kind of null and void. But in terms of the still aspect, the shooting speed has increased more on the mirrorless side than it has on the DSLR side. Showing that clearly the mirror is now becoming a bottleneck in terms of maximum shooting speed. But also, if what I remember from the DP review video is to be believed, the AF tracking is actually more reliable through the live view than it is through the optical viewfinder. And it seems the same sort of story with the D780. Now the D780 seems to be that Nikon have taken the internals of a Z6... They've added the DSLR components of a D5 and then thrown it all into a D750 body. But apart from the D850's autofocus, that whole camera is in essence a Z6, but with about a £600 higher price tag. Which honestly, I think the 780 is to please people who have got the 750, want an upgrade, but think mirrorless is taboo and they're not allowed to talk about it. It would be interesting to see a comparison between the D780 and the Z6 with the FZ adapter and some F lenses. I don't think there is going to be that much of a difference. In fact, I don't think there's going to be any difference. Which means then you've got a camera that's 600 quid more expensive and the only differences are that it's got two memory card slots versus one and it can't take the Z mount lenses, only the F. And the future's going to be in the Z mount. Although, speaking of F-mount, we come on to the final release. Which is a 120 to 300 mm F2.8. And when I first saw this, I thought it was a really exciting announcement. Because I used to own the Sigma 120 to 300 mm In fact, I own two of them. I own the DG OS HSM and then I own the Sport version. And both were fantastic lenses. However, it soon shifted from interest to shock when I saw the price tag of nearly 10 grand. Because you can get the Sigma Sport lens for about 3 grand. Which means you can get three Sigma Sport lenses with change to spare. Now, obviously... The Sigma Sports aren't a perfect lens, there will be room for improvement. The Nikon would have to be ridiculously good. I mean, to justify that much of a price difference, the lens could weigh no more than 100 grams. The autofocus would have to be so fast that it could acquire the subject in focus before you'd even press the shutter button. And it'd have to be so razor sharp that it could dice an onion. Inside a metal box. Inside a tank. If it can't do all of that, then I think three times the price tag over the Sigma is taking the piss just a little bit. But what do you guys make of these announcements? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. While you're down there, if you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And there is also a link to our Patreon account where you can get some exclusive behind-the-scenes content and prize giveaways as well. But thank you so much for stopping by, and hopefully, we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.